Okay, how about you tell me about entropy, like everything you know about it. So I know it's not necessarily a measure of disorder, but it leads to disorder. <laughs> uh, but uh, you say it's not necessarily a measure of disorder? Yeah, but it's, it's kind of, I remember it's what the other was talking about. Um, I know that, yeah, I don't know, it's like the different configurations a system could be in. And we're trying to okay. determine the number of different configurations there could be. So we can do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Those are ideas of entropy, right? Mm -hmm. But obviously, it's not necessarily what entropy is. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let's see if we can get a good definition of entropy. Because it says in the book, read to me what it says in the book. It's the capacity of a system to undergo a change in the distribution of energy within the system. Okay. So there's this idea then that I just said about distribution of energy. So um, entropy entails this idea where there is something that is in a certain state and naturally it just wants to like, it wants to go from this state, whatever it's in, to a state of, of, I guess, less energy and a state of like less work almost. You can almost think of it like there's, there's a, naturally things just don't like being in like concentrated air, concentrated space or things don't like being in high amounts of energy. They like to just get rid of it all. It's almost like just you and me sick being sick and tired of working 24 7 let's say we had to work 24 7 seven days a week and um so pretty much be a mother <laughs> yeah and we um mothers eventually just want to just take a break right so i guess in th thinking in terms of like molecules and then having you know feelings and you know they have to go see social workers and stuff like that because they're just so sick and tired of of, you know, it's thinking of, well, yeah, so sick and tired of being the state they're in. They just want to stop. They just want to be lazy. So things naturally want to go from a state of high energy where they're working hard to a state of lower energy where they don't have to work as hard. Okay. Or things like to go from a state of that high working state and eventually we work towards equilibrium as well. They like to distribute that energy with its surroundings in a certain way so that everything's even, per se. Okay. Like, uh, like uh, I guess if you take an ice cube and you take it, so in the freezer, it, if, well, let's first think of getting water and we put it inside of our little ice cube tray and we put it in the freezer. It'll freeze, right? Well, it freezes because obviously it's cold in there and it, uh, naturally just kind of gets into that state, per se. That isn't a decrease in entropy, that's an increase. I mean, that isn't an increase in entropy, that is a decrease in entropy. But anyways, taking the fridge and saying, okay, why does it freeze? Well, it's really cold, so eventually the energy within the ice will actually start going towards its surroundings. And this may be too hard, but anyways, we'll get it in a second. Um, so it's frozen, but if you take it out, we now have this ice cube in very dense, I mean it's all of its bonds within it, so we're thinking water, we're thinking the hydrogen bonds have, are, have, are now solidified, and we have a bunch of water molecules like this, and they're attached by hydrogen bonding, right, and they form that crystalline structure, or whatever it is. But then, as it's, well, even thinking of this, there is a certain amount of energy within this that it contains. When you take it out of that state of being in the freezer, it doesn't want to be in that anymore. It wants to then, man, I'm so sick and tired, this water molecule is like bugging me. I've had to live with this guy the whole time been in the freezer. He's, I don't like him anymore. So naturally, he just wants to get away from it. And of course I'm saying it in silly terms, 
But anyways, so as you place that ice cube on the counter, it eventually just starts to melt. What it's doing is dispersing its energy. There's energy within the bonds. There's energy within this. It doesn't want to be in that state anymore because it doesn't have to be. It's not in the freezer anymore. It's like, oh, because I'm not in this freezer, I'm totally going to... I'm totally going to do whatever the heck I want. So he's going to start wanting to leave. These hydrogen bonds are going to break, and it's going to turn into a liquid. In that state, it doesn't want that high amount of energy. It wants to get rid of it. It wants to disperse it. It will within it, the water and the table. It'll then make the the. It'll then take energy from the table and become well, not really. Yeah. It'll then just start slowly spreading, spreading out and and dispersing itself and. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but... It makes sense. So, I think what you're saying is as the, the water molecules turn into liquid, we're having either an increase or a decrease in entropy. Okay. <clears throat> so, we're saying that entropy, the definition of entropy, is this idea that there is a... a... well... Entropy, oh, that's such a, I, what the book said in terms of dis, distributing energy and wanting to reach equilibrium eventually. When something is in a state like this, where it has lots of bonds, which has high amounts of energy with, located within those bonds, it going from that state to a state of lesser energy is a increase in entropy. It's a positive value. So entropy being in terms of a state function, we're saying in this state, it has a certain amount of energy. Let's say, I mean, yeah, it has a certain amount of entropy. We'll say it has 10 joules of entropy, or, yeah. Because you can say that. You can actually measure it in entropy. We can do it mathematically, which we'll talk about. So then, if it has that much entropy and it's gaining entropy, we're now gaining entropy. So it's a positive value mm -hmm. if it goes from a state of higher concentration to lesser concentration, or a state of higher energy to a state of lower energy. Is that because the energy is more distributed throughout the system? Yes. Maybe even a better way of thinking, instead of thinking of an ice cube, because thinking of an ice cube is a really good way of visualizing something being in high concentration to wanting to spread out, you know, get elbow room. Um, it, it doesn't like being cramped, so it's just going to want to just kind of lay out like on the beach, you know. Maybe that's a good example. Ice cube was in Alaska, and now it went to California, and it's, it's like, I'm going to go by myself and just lay on the beach. But anyways, this that's a good example of just... Uh, dis distributing, well, I guess changing volume, or, yeah, of going from a higher concentration to lesser concentration. But if we think of, like, a, we used a bullet last time, but if we think of, like, uh, in a, like a, let's just say, black powder, or something that's explosive, like an atomic bomb or something, I don't know. If we think of that, we think of our little pile of black powder here, how much energy do you think is within this black powder? I mean, we could say a lot, right? I mean, there's a lot. A lot. <laughs> Thanks, honey. A lot. So, what if we took a match to it? It explode, right? Well, where does all that energy go? It's dispersed into its surroundings. Yeah, that's so it. It disperses into its surroundings. Obviously, with the lighting the match to the black powder, it makes it then creates a scenario where they can get out of that position of being in high state of entropy. So it's interesting because it's it just kind of naturally happens when you throw the match on. There's nothing more you need to do. You don't need to like, you don't need to do a certain special seance. You don't need to like <laughs> say special words. I, I'm just, I know I'm being silly, but you don't have to do anything else but light the match and put it on, right? Then it just does it naturally. So it naturally explodes and disperses its energy, right? Mm -hmm. But then, here's the thing. That energy released, it goes into its surroundings, but can you, like, go around and recollect that energy? Can't it? Yeah. 
So that's kind so, of where the disorder comes in, right? Yes. Okay. So now we have this idea where, okay, with the ice cube, we have this idea where you can pick it up easy. I mean, it's easy to handle. I mean, it's I mean it's cold, but but it's I mean if you had a big giant thing of ice, it's really easy to just pick the whole thing up. In terms of black powder as well, I mean you can actually grab the powder, you know, and have it work through your hands and stuff. But after it melts, the ice, I mean, now it's water. I mean, can you grab it? Can you? You got to put it in something to control it, right? I mean, it has, it doesn't have as much order. I mean, it's kind of spread out everywhere. If you pour it on the table, it'll just go anywhere. It really doesn't have much more, or has more chaos. Same with this. The thing exploded and it goes everywhere. You can obviously think of how much chaos black powder actually gives when it explodes. If you're near it, that's lots of chaos. But, um, but then you can't harness it and reuse the energy. Like you can't, after the ice cube melts and, you're, and it made your uh, cup cold, eventually that water is just going to eventually become the same temperature as the room again. So then that water that used to be ice no longer can make that water, water turn that same temperature as before. Because the energy is it's dispersed. It's dispersed. It's dispersed. It's it's now in the sur it's now in the surroundings. I mean, and the same with that. So I'm really thinking like entropy. You correct me if I'm wrong, but it has a lot to do with like where the energy is at point A and where it's at point B. Okay. It's, it's not. It's different from entropy in the sense of how much we have, but it's a measurement of it. How much of it is dispersed or? Yes. Okay. It's this measurement of of in the particular system. How much energy is either being lost, or how much, uh, or gained, or how much more order is being put into it, or disorder that it's starting to more become, I guess. So there's those two ideas. There's the energy, and also uh, chaos, or order. And I'm trying to remember if there's one more idea to it. <coughs> can't remember if there was just that simple, because... Enthalpy and disorder. Um, second law of thermodynamics. Is it just those two things? Does it talk about energy, the capacity to change? Uh, I mean, in, in our understanding of enthalpy, I think this is as far as we're really going to go. I think the best way to think of it is in these two examples of.